elevate in terms of good health and great wealth so you can live a long time to see the downfall of Africa's enemy. Uh, at this time, I'd like to call one of our good friends, brother, that has a lot of information on land ownership. Uh, because when we say that we are Africans, or uh, we're people from this continent, uh, can we truly say that we are Africans and we don't own any of this land? If we don't have anything on this land with our name on it, can we truly say that this land is for us and we don't have any documents showing that this land is ours? Mm -hmm. I'm challenging you and everybody that's watching this video to please invest in this land, get a plot, get an acre, get yeah. um, you know, in America, the largest landowner is Ted Turner. He got three million acres of America in his back pocket. Okay? It's hard to own land in America. It's hard, it's hard to even just straight out buy, um, to buy a house. The, the banks and all those people are there, vampires uh, with mortgages and rent and all that. So we have to break away from rent and mortgage, which is a, um, a sophisticated way of, of robbing people. <laughs> so in essence, uh, this brother is going to give you some information, some insight on how to buy land and own land and keep it in Ghana. Let's welcome Brother Danquart. Great. <laughs> and he's been working in the land department for many years, and he's retired. He's now a consultancy company. So he's an expert. Shalom. 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 Well, as we all know, land is very important to mankind. Without land, I don't think that we can even be in this hotel. So land has been very controversial since time immemorial. Uh, now when you talk about land, we have the land mass, we have water bodies, all those things. Recently, there was a, a boundary problem between Ghana and La Côte d'Ivoire. And uh, it was settled in the international courts. And Ghana, has had the upper hand. In effect, uh, the Avorians were claiming the land, and Ghana was claiming the land. Already, Ghana is on the water body doing oil exploration. So we all know how land is very important. Now, if you hear about wars going on in different parts of the world, most of the time, land is the uh, cause of those dispute, fights, and the wars. Now, as investors, or as uh, people from the diaspora, when you come into this country, some of you will wish to do investment here. Some of you will want to put our homes. You know that from time to time, even if you are not here permanently, when you come, you can have a place to lay your head. Mm -hmm. So, learn if you want to acquire it, because it's controversial. There are certain steps you have to put in place. Like for instance, if you need any land in any part of Ghana here, the first and foremost thing you have to do is, go, is to get a map or a plan of the land. And then you go to any of the land agencies. Then you make what you call a search, an official search whereby the result will be given to you in a documentary form. There are some people who can just go through the back door. You go and see an officer of a land agency, and then they will do a search for him privately. That's why you wouldn't have any written documentation. So when you go by that way, and tomorrow you go on the land and then there's a problem, you will not have any support that when you conduct an official search, whereby the land agency gives you a form you fill with your name and address, you pay for a fee, and a result is given to you, signed by the registrar, or anybody who is appointed to do those things. And you take it and there's a problem, you can take the land agency to task. Maybe take them to court, because they have been studying to go and buy a land which is a common with a lot of problems. Now, if you are acquire land, having them this, and then you are satisfied that there's no problem on the land from the history, whoever is selling the land to you is having his name registered. So because I want to sell land to you, you collected a site plan for me. And then you go and make an official search, and it reveals a name which relates to me. 
then you know that when you are dealing with me on that parcel of land, you will not have any problem. Because I will have to sign a transfer to you, either in the form of gift, or in the form of conveyance, or in the form of an assignment, or in the form of a lease. All these things are different types of acquisition. Now let me calm down so that you understand it. Presently, by the laws of the land, if you are not a Ghanaian, you cannot have a free home. That is, you cannot buy a land. In effect, when you acquire a land, all that can be done for you is to give you a lease. That is a deed of lease. That is a document which will stipulate the term that you will have to have the land. And then there will be option for renewal. So when you get a lease, it doesn't mean that because it's given to you for a term, and then when you put out a house, they are going to take it in future. No. But in this case, it means that you have to pay what we call ground rent. And these ground rents, they are paid annually. At the time of the acquisition, depending upon the size of the land, the measurements, then the person who is the lawsuit, it means somebody who has a land and he's giving it to you in a lease form. That one, he gives you a term. And then the term, after the term, you will have a clause in the deed, which when I say deed, is an instrument or a legal paper whereby it is stating the form of acquisition that you have had. So by that it means that you pay rent annually. And then when the term is expired, you have to actually renew it. You have an option for renewal. That is one aspect of it. In case I have got a leasehold, that means somebody has leased a land to me, and I in turn want to give you that land. Then it means I have to assign my interest in the land to you. And that will be less one day of the term that me, the person who leads the land to me, if you gave me 15 years or 60 years, it means the residue term, that is the remaining term at the time that you are buying the land from me, minus one day. That is what I can assign my interest to you. And that one, we call it a deed of assignment. And that one, once I've given all my interest to you, my leasehold interest in you, you will pay me what we call consideration. When we say consideration, it means that you acquire a land. And then uh, the land that you acquire, there's specific, a specific amount which you have to pay to enable me to give you the land. So that one, in the form of an assignment, you are going to take over the leasehold interest that I have. And don't forget, having paid me my consideration, it means the ground rent that I have to pay, you are now going to take it from me because I'll transfer all my leasehold interest to you. And then, you can also have a land. Maybe you come here and then we become good friends and say, I have a parcel of land. So let me give you part. That one I can give it to you in a form of what we call gift. And that one, the agreement will be what we call a deed of gift. And then when you have a deed of gift, it means that you there have to be a thanks. Uh, there have to be thanks if somebody gives you a gift. Whether clothes or anything, you thank the person. So the agreement will indicate that I have transferred my land to you in a form of gift. And you have also thanked me by maybe a bottle of schnapp or a rum or anything that you think you also want to give me for giving you that gift. So it means you have accepted the gift that I have given to you. And then apart from that, we have a deed of mortgage. That is when you have acquired land and then you want to use your deed for a facility from the bank, and then you have to go in for a mortgage. In effect, if you do not pay the bank, the bank will take over your property and then dispose of it. And in this case, when you have paid, 
the loan or the uh, facility that was given to you from the bank. When you are finished with it, they will give you what we call a deed of discharge. The deed of discharge is that uh, your indebtedness, indebtedness to the bank, you have paid it and they have discharged the mortgage for you. So in effect, immediately when they give you a discharge, a deed of discharge, the property will refer back to your name. But at that time that the thing was mortgaged for you, that one, it means that you cannot have the land for any other purpose until you are paid for the land. And then don't forget, when you are acquiring land, we acquire land for different purposes. You may acquire land for agricultural purpose, you may acquire land for industrial purpose, you may acquire land for a commercial purpose, you may acquire land for religious purpose, and you may acquire land also for uh, educational. And then, when you have acquired this land, in a, a situation whereby you are going to develop it, you must get what we call a permit. And before the permit will be given to you, the district assembly or the local assembly whose jurisdiction is where your land is located, will have to give you what we call a building permit to enable you to put up either a church or an educational institution or an industry or for a commercial purpose. In effect, when you are acquiring the land, when you do the search from the land agency, you may also go to the district assembly or the metropolitan assembly to find out whether the land you are acquiring fits into the scheme. That is what we call a layout. And that layout, it means the land that you are acquiring, it will conform to the uh, local authority that if you want to put a school, they place at the earmark for school. So when you acquire a land for a school, you cannot go and use that for an industry. The area should be earmarked for an industry, and then you can actually get approval. And then, apart from that, lands are either owned by an individual, or by a family, or by a stool, or by a scale, or by the state. So for instance, when somebody is giving you a land, and you go and make a search, and the search reveals that the land is a state land, in effect, when you buy that land, you cannot get your papers through because it's a state land. It's only the state which can give you the land. And then, apart from that, land has got a value. And the value of the land always appreciates. In effect, you can buy a parcel of land for, say, um, 10,000 Ghana cities. In about a year or two years' time, you can sell it at a, even double the price, depending upon the value of the area. And the value of any land in a particular area, to know the value, we have what we call comparables. Comparables is, for instance, if you want to acquire a land in East Ligon here, they have a range of price. So nobody will sell land to you within this area less than that price, because everybody knows it. Likewise, a rent. If you want to rent a house in this area here, maybe for a two-bedroom house, you may get it, the cheapest may be about uh, 2,500 Ghana cities, depending upon the area. And if you want to rent, everybody is aware that this is the rent that is going on. So, in a nutshell, I will advise those of you who are gathered here who will be interested in acquiring land, that if you want to acquire land, you must seek an expert. At least, if you, want, if you have the intention of acquiring any land here, after the lectures, you can take my number. And any time that you call me that you want to acquire a land, I will take you through a process which will enable you to acquire a land which will be problematic, which will be problem, problematic free. So you take note of that. Don't acquire land because uh, David is your friend and you bring 
a side plan to you and he tells you that, oh, this is my land, I want to sell it to you. Even if your father wants to give you a land, go and check. Go if you go and check, you may buy the land and somebody else will come with a better title. And then he will come to you that the land is my land. Maybe you have already put out a sponge of nature and you have to go back and buy it from him. Other than that, he can take you to court and take a court on that to be demolish your burden. So, so far, I will end here. When we come to uh, question time, maybe I can expatiate more on it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Very good. Great advice. You know, we have to always have the experts. So believe me, you, you right here, they just opened a new Marriott. Then they got a Holiday Inn, you know, in the Hilton Hotel. Believe me, they've done their homework. You know, they come here, they pay millions of dollars that they've stolen from us. Um, and then they come here and they buy it because they're trying to get rid of some of that excess cash that they, 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 they just get from us because, you know, we haven't always um, taken advantage of the opportunities. But now, as you can see, opportunities in Africa, in Africa for the African, we're going to make sure that these next hotels open up, one of you all will be on it. Let's say I share.